Good morning. The Subcommittee on Human Resources and Intergovernmental Relations is now in session. Today the Subcommittee continues its review of federal studies of Agent Orange, the toxic herbicide used in Vietnam. Last year we conducted a hearing on the Agent Orange exposure study designed by the Centers for Disease Control. That study was canceled in 1987 because, CDC claimed, it was scientifically impossible to determine exposure to Agent Orange. After that hearing, I concluded that the CDC study was so poorly conducted that it had e either been botched or rigged. Since then, a great deal has happened, some of it encouraging news for Vietnam veterans, but much of it still discouraging. The subcommittee obtained the records of the White House Agent Orange Working Group. Those records are an important part of a report I will soon recommend for approval to the subcommittee and full committee. Last January, CDC issued a long awaited selected cancer study which showed Vietnam veterans to be at significantly greater risk of contracting non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Based on that finding, the Secretary of Veterans Affairs decided to compensate Vietnam veterans who have non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, although the Secretary did not directly link the disease to Agent Orange. A month ago, Admiral Elmo Zumwalt, who will testify today, issued a report linking Agent Orange with a wide range of deadly diseases and asked that the Department of Veterans Affairs compensate Vietnam veterans suffering from the various illnesses. Based on Admiral Zumwalt's recommendation, the Secretary of Veterans Affairs added another rare cancer, soft tissue sarcoma, as a compensable disease, but again, did not formally link it to Agent Orange exposure. That's the good news. The bad news is that the federal government continues to insist that Agent Orange exposure cannot be assessed despite evidence to the contrary. And the Department of Veterans Affairs continues to deny the vast majority of more than 30,000 claims by veterans with diseases associated with dioxin, the chemical contaminant in Agent Orange. We will hear testimony again today about Agent Orange. We will also hear testimony about the toxic effects of other herbicides, which are used regularly in the United States by everyone from farmers to homeowners. These herbicides contain contaminants related to dioxin. The effects of these poisons may be important in determining the consequences of Agent Orange exposure. Other herbicides, many of which are regularly used in the U.S., may be just as deadly, if not more so. We will hear about some of those herb herbicides today, perhaps for the first time in connection with Agent Orange. Finally, the subcommittee will review allegations of bias in the review of studies conducted by the Department of Veterans Affairs Advisory Committee on Environmental Hazards. I must say that uh, the testimony that we're about to get, I find extremely shocking. Uh, it is one thing to ask Americans to go into battle and to risk life and limb. It's another thing to then, after they've done that and suffered either directly or indirectly from the military situation they found themselves in, to deny them the compensation for injuries or illnesses they, which they contracted. The testimony which we're about to receive today will again demonstrate that there has been a shocking determination to deny compensation and to deny scientific evidence, not because the evidence was not there, but because the White House was afraid of what it would cost to compensate veterans who risked their lives for this country. Beyond that, we will be hearing testimony which will indicate that the cover-up of the effects of dioxin and dioxin-related contaminants, in fact, has gone beyond just the military and has gone into the civilian sector as well, so that not only veterans and their families ha have cause to be concerned, but all Americans have cause to be concerned. When they began to contract illnesses from their exposure to Agent Orange, Vietnam veterans sought compensation for their suffering. They asked for justice, but instead had their claims rejected and had scientific studies of their illnesses manipulated by White House officials on a mission to reduce government spending. This is the ultimate affront to the brave men and women who died in combat on foreign soil and who die yet today from their exposure to toxic chemicals two decades ago. Before we call our first uh, witness, let me indicate uh, what this morning's schedule will be. As you know, this is a very exciting day on Capitol Hill. Nelson Mandela will be addressing a joint session of Congress at uh, 11 o'clock. 
we will continue our hearing until a quarter of 11. At that time, we will take a recess and we will resume the hearing at a, within 15 minutes uh, after the joint session has concluded. I expect that to be somewhere around 12 or 12.15 at the latest, and we will then conclude our hearings. Our first witness will be a, today it will be a distinguished American who has devoted his life to the service of his country, Admiral Elmo Zumwalt. Admiral, we're proud to have you with us today. Uh, as you know, the procedures of the Government Operations Committee is that our witnesses are all sworn in, so if you would, sir, stand, raise your right hand. You swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. What we were asked all of our witnesses to do today is to try to condense their testimony to no more than 10 minutes so that we can, in fact, conclude uh, the hearing with everyone getting a chance to uh, testify and to respond to some questions if we have any. And with that, we have your prepared statement, which, of course, will be entered into the record without objection in its entirety and you may proceed as you deem appropriate. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And well, they, that microphone is not very sensitive, so I have to bring it re rather close to yourself. Good. I have here uh, today in the room uh, Mr. Phil Friedman of Ross and Hardy's, who helped me prepare this study, and as did uh, Dr. Gene Stellman, Dr. Alan Silbergold, Dr. Peter Kahn, all in this room there, some of the 10 or 15 scientists who worked with me. As many of you know, it's been my special assignment over the past several months at the direction of Secretary Dewinsky of the Department of Veterans Affairs to undertake an extensive review of the available scientific literature that speaks to the human health effects associated with exposure to the contaminants found in Agent Orange. In a report filed with the Secretary on May 5, 1990, a copy of which I am submitting for the record of these proceedings, I set forth in some detail, A, the results of my assessment of the health impacts, that credited medical and scientific studies are indicating can be linked to exposures to dioxin contaminants found in Agent Orange, B, the probable association of those exposures with cancers and other debilitating illnesses, including birth defects, and C, how the weight of studied literature required the conclusion that a significant number of adverse health effects suffered by Vietnam veterans are more likely than not associated with service-related exposure to Agent Orange. Let me start by stating that there's an overwhelming body of credited scientific research supporting the conclusion that certain cancers and other illnesses are associated with exposure to Agent Orange. Tragically, there is also credible evidence strongly suggesting that the probable cause of birth defects among children of Vietnam veterans can be traced to their parents' exposure to Agent Orange. The committee should take note that I do not appear before you alone in my views the 27 health effects that I list in my report closely parallel the recently released findings of the Agent Orange Scientific Task Force. This group of seven independent and prominent scientists assembled by various veterans groups also evaluated the available scientific literature and concluded on their own that 21 health effects are associated with exposure to Agent Orange. It is indeed a fair observation that any objective review of the available scientific literature by knowledgeable experts will predict it lead to much the same conclusion. When I began the formidable task assigned to me by Secretary Dewinsky, I hoped against hope that I would not find a discernible association between illnesses experienced by Vietnam veterans and exposure to Agent Orange. For one, I accepted Secretary Dewinsky's assignment out of a keen awareness that from 1970 to 74 as Commander Naval Forces in Vietnam, I approved of and ordered the extensive spraying of Agent Orange as a proven means of reducing combat casualties. Secondly, while my son Elmo and I frequently suspected that his suffering and eventual death from both Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma were related to his wartime exposure to Agent Orange, both he and I believed, as did many others, that there was insufficient scientific evidence to support a linkage between his illnesses and Agent Orange exposure. That was, of course, the conventional propaganda of the time. The sad truth which emerges from my work is not only that there is credible evidence linking certain cancers and other illnesses with Agent Orange, but that the government and industry officials credited with examining such linkage intentionally manipulated or withheld compelling information on the adverse health effects associated with exposure to the toxic contaminants contained in Agent Orange. As my report documents, the efforts to distort the record of the health effects of Agent Orange were so appallingly egregious that they continue to needlessly muddle the debate on the human health effects of toxic dioxins. In my statement, I then go into detail on the fraudulent uh, 
uh, production of both the government studies and the chemical company studies. The uh, second group of the, uh, the disproportionate impact of these studies uh, is overriding all of my conclusions. What is so incredible about the revelations associated with Agent Orange is that the flawed scientific studies and manipulated conclusions are not only unduly denying justice to Vietnam veterans suffering from exposure to Agent Orange, they are now standing in the way of a full disclosure to the American people of the likely health effects of exposure to, toxin, to toxic dioxins. Consider that Dr. Vernon Houck, a member of the White House Agent Orange Working Group, and the current director of the Center for Environmental Health and Injury Control, recently recommended that a state government adopt dioxin dumping standards for paper mills at a level 50 times greater than that recommended by the EPA. Astoundingly, Dr. Houck's letter comes even in the face of the EPA's own warning that the presence of such a potent carcinogen as dioxin in the production of paper warrants greater concern, attention, and regulatory action. This, remember, is coming from the director of the very department within the CDC responsible for the Agent Orange studies that I've covered. For those cynics who remain, consider further that military applications of Agent Orange were dropped in concentrations 6 to 25 times greater than considered at the time safe for human use. In light of the fact that developing scientific and medical expertise continues to verify that dioxin is a potent carcinogen and that we now know from the field of immunology that dioxin through immunosuppression indirectly facilitates the spread of cancer, there is more than enough evidence to give the Vietnam veteran exposed to Agent Orange the benefit of the doubt, to the extent Doubting Thomas has remained. On his compensation claim for service-related cancers, birth defects, and other illnesses listed in my report. To his credit, Secretary Dewinsky, with the personal support of the President, has honorably distanced himself from the Agent Orange fraud. In an attentive, thoughtful, and compassionate decision, Secretary Dewinsky recently concluded that soft tissue Sarcoma is a compensable service-related uh, injury directly associated with a veteran's exposure to Agent Orange. This comes on the heels of an earlier decision to recognize non-Hodgkin's lymphoma as a compensable injury. While these are landmark decisions in the sordid Agent Orange affair, they are only the first steps in righting a significant national wrong committed against our Vietnam veterans. As documented in my report, the Agent Orange Scientific Task Force report and numerous other studies that speak to the serious health risks associated with exposure to the contaminants found in Agent Orange, there is more than enough verifiable, credible evidence to justify service-connected compensation for Vietnam veterans exposed to Agent Orange. The debate on this matter has been needlessly prolonged. The right decision, indeed the only morally acceptable decision, for members of this committee and their colleagues in Congress is to acknowledge that Agent Orange is responsible for a wide range of diseases, illnesses, and birth defects for which the Vietnam veteran should be rightfully compensated. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Admiral Grimwald. And you notice that your timing was impeccable. The red light went on just as you uttered your last Thank words. You. You've recommended that the Department of Veterans Affairs compensate Vietnam veterans for 27 different illnesses. Yet until only three months ago, the department refused to compensate veterans for any disease related to Agent Orange other than chloracane, chloracne. Why has the government been ignoring evidence linking Agent Orange exposure to diseases? The problem, Mr. Chairman, has been that there has been manipulation of the studies done by the government. In my statement, I document uh, at great length and in the report at greater length the extent of the manipulations of both the ranch hand work and the Centers for Disease Control studies. These studies are, in my judgment, absolutely without merit to the extent that uh, they have been used to presume negative findings. In the case of the ranch hand study, the power is uh, too low. The National Academy of Science, in its preliminary reviews of the uh, protocol, said that the power was too low. Uh, and nevertheless, there have been suggestive uh, positive findings uh, in spite of the power that have been withheld from the public. Uh, and uh, the conclusions have been manipulated from one that were not reassuring to one that asserted that the conclusions were reassuring. Uh, 
Similarly, with regard to the Centers for Disease Control uh, studies, once the Agent Orange uh, study was not done as a result of fraudulent conclusions about the capability to place company positions and therefore sticking to battalion positions, uh, which uh, succeeded in diluting the numbers who were exposed, once the conclusion was made not to complete that study, then there was absolutely no excuse for going forward with the selected cancer study, which was to have been based upon the identification of those who had been exposed. And the, uh, then to, to, to report the selected cancer study out as one that, that in any way uh, was negative with regard to Agent Orange was another fraud perpetrated on the public. You use, you use the word fraud so that you're, you're suggesting that this was not just a, a misjudgment or a, 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 a study that went bad by accident or coincidence, but that in fact this was a deliberate effort. That is my uh, strong conclusion. I believe that Dr. Vernon Houck, who heads that one division of the Centers for Disease Control, which lacks the superb excellence of the other six divisions, uh, has made it his mission to uh, manipulate and prevent the true facts from being determined. I think it's absolutely unbelievable that he would have recommended to a state agency that the uh, dioxin dumping standard be increased by a factor of 50. Last Friday, the subcommittee received a draft copy of the Air Force Ranch Hand Study of Birth Defects. Ranch Hand is the name that was given to a uh, study of those group of, of, of people who were, dis who were responsible for dumping the Agent Orange uh, uh, toxic material out of the airplanes. Although the preliminary findings indicated that ranch hand personnel were at higher risk of fathering offspring with birth defects after Vietnam service, the study has not been completed. Would the birth defects findings be significant in determining compensation for Vietnam veterans exposed to Agent Orange? They would, and I think it is absolutely shocking that it took a threatened subpoena from this committee to get that study released after the Air Force had refused to release it to, on the personal request of Senator Daschle and others for many years. I think it uh, does show, in spite of the fact that it uh, is a low power study, that there is a very strong presumption that birth defects uh, have been caused by exposure to Agent Orange. Uh, and the, the, the failure to complete that study uh, when it was, we were told at the time in 1984 that it would take only an additional 12 months to do so, the failure to uh, find the, the true exposure index for the individuals in that study uh, can, in my judgment, only be judged as contributing to a decision to not disclose the facts about the, uh, the harmful effects of Agent Orange. And it, for that reason, makes me very concerned about the forthcoming Air Force study on birth defects which I think should be viewed with great suspicion and I believe should be independently evaluated going right down to the raw data by experts brought in by uh, your committee or, or another branch of government. You've concluded that the Advisory Committee on Environmental Hazards was biased in its review of Agent Orange. Have you identified the reason for this bias? Yes, sir, and in my uh, report I uh, go to some considerable length uh, to show the extent to which respected scientists have uh, found fault with the procedures of that study and in my first statement to the committee when I appeared with them uh, at my first meeting, I'm now on that committee of environmental hazards, I went into great length there with what I thought were wrong with their procedures. I, I having sat through one of those meetings, have respect for uh, a number of the members of that committee, but I continue to hold my belief that their procedures are badly flawed and that there are several on that committee who uh, have distinct biases uh, against any finding of uh, a correlation between Agent Orange and uh, health effects. Does the Monsanto Corporation manufacture herbicides? Yes, sir, it does. Has the advisory committee relied on research prepared by Monsanto scientists, Zach and Gaffey, in its investigation of the effects of Agent Orange? It has. And they, I, I should add that uh, it has also relied on another uh, key reference study, the one done by the, the chemical company in Germany, BASF. In both cases, we now know, and uh, my statement documents, and my report documents, that the data that go into the studies that have flowed from 
the Monsanto explosion in 1949 and the German explosion in 1953 are fraudulent data. Uh, yet they have for years been cited uh, by uh, epidemiologists as the basic reference studies. The EPA has considered that those are the only ones for which the data collected was precise enough and the latency period long enough that they could be used in that context. And they were cited, for example, by Ma Michael Gao, who uh, was formerly a member of the Agent Orange Working Group in the White House, uh, as uh, the, the basic reason for uh, poo-pooing the results of uh, other studies which show a very high correlation uh, between exposure to dioxin and uh, health effects. Uh, they have therefore uh, performed a, a terrible disservice to the American and world public. Uh, these fraudulent studies being used as a basic reference have helped to cast doubt on the much more carefully done honest studies that have followed. When you say that the studies were proved to be fraudulent, uh, what do you mean by that? In the case of the Monsanto studies done by uh, Zach and Gaffney and by Zach and Susskind, uh, there is a, uh, a, a document uh, that I just read last night uh, that, that breaks your heart. Uh, the, the deposition, uh, or ac actually the court testimony of Dr. Rausch of Monsanto, who admits that these studies uh, took people from the exposed group and called them unexposed and left cancer deaths from exposed people out and that as a result whereas the original study showed no correlation between exposure and health outcomes the true uh, outcomes were 65 percent more cancers overall similarly with regard to the BASF studies uh, a doctor uh, Rohleder uh, hired by the German social court to examine the BASF uh, company supplied data uh, reported at a ninth symposium of, uh, on dioxin in Toronto last year that when you left out the 20 supervisory personnel that were fraudulently put in there as exposed that you came out with cancers of the respiratory system 2.66 times as great as normal and cancers of the digestive system 2.55 times as great. Uh, I'm I have a few more questions, but before I go on, let me indicate that we've been joined by two of the distinguished members of uh, this committee, uh, the ranking Republican member, Mr. Army, and Mr. Smith of Vermont, and we're pleased to have them in. At, when you conclude your testimony, I'll recognize them for opening comments that they may have. Um, in January, the Centers for Disease Control released a study on selected cancers in Vietnam veterans. Did you review the selected cancer study? I did, Mr. Chairman. The CDC found Vietnam veterans to be at increased risk of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, but did, not, but did not find any evidence that the increased risk was related to Agent Orange exposure. Did CDC attempt to measure Agent Orange exposure in the subject of the selected cancer study? No, they did not, and in my judgment it was deliberately deceptive to infer in any way that the, the study told us anything about exposure to Agent Orange. What it did show, in spite of the CDC's best efforts to the contrary notwithstanding, is that even with all of the, di the dilution of, a, of exposure to Agent Orange by, by examining all Vietnam veterans, not all of whom were exposed, you still found a 50% greater occurrence of non-Hodgkins. Uh, they, they pretended as though the negative findings with regard to other cancers were meaningful, whereas in fact the power for those cancers was so low that it's ridiculous that they should even have referred to them. A 1988 Veterans Administration study comparing Marine and Army veterans of Vietnam found that the Marines serving in I Corps were at greater risk of con contracting non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and lung cancer. The director of the VA's Office of Environmental Medicine testified before this subcommittee last year that there was no significance to these findings. Do you agree with that conclusion? Uh, no, sir. That's another one of the fraudulent things that the CDC has, has done. Uh, they, they keep referring to the three corps uh, and the, the fact that the Army results were not as great as suggesting that there's something uh, unusual uh, and to be disregarded with regard to the findings up in I-Corps. Uh, every source that we examine shows higher occurrences in I-Corps. The, the Veteran Administration's own study comparing Marines who went to Vietnam with those who did not 
showed 110% more non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and 57% more lung cancer among those Marines. Now, the CDC made no effort whatsoever to come up with a logical explanation. Had they talked to anyone who understood the Vietnam situation, the, the explanation is very logical as to why the Marines would show higher than the Army. In the I Corps, all of the logistics were provided by the U.S. Navy, and those Navy personnel were corresponding to the Army logistics personnel down in III Corps who were not exposed. But since the Navy was not examined, and only the Marines out in the jungles were examined, uh, the data properly showed much higher. That group was, on the average, much more highly exposed because in the Army case, they were diluted by their based logistics personnel. Furthermore, in the I Corps, the Marines had a quite different system for fighting the war. For a great periods of time, they went out into the villages and stayed there and uh, tried to uh, introduce uh, the hearts and minds of the people to uh, democratic ways, whereas the Army went in, went back to base, took showers, went in, went back to base, took showers. The Marines living in those villages, eating the food, drinking the water, not getting the showers, were much more highly exposed. So it's a perfectly logical explanation that the CDC chose to disregard. Although the Secretary of Veterans Affairs has agreed to compensate veterans for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and soft tissue sarcoma, there are dozens of other diseases you recommended for compensation status. Has the Secretary given you any indication about whether he will accept your other recommendations? No, sir. Uh, he has indicated that he appreciated the study and that he thought it had a contribution with regard to his determination on soft tissue sarcoma. As I indicated in my uh, uh, earlier comments, I think he is the first head of the veterans who has uh, truly and objectively tried to get at the data. His problem is that he has inherited a committee which is using flawed procedures, some of whose members are biased, and uh, a procedure which uh, is mechanistic and takes a very long time to work through. Uh, these new data have not yet been examined with regard to the, the many other health effects that must be examined. Uh, I uh, am of the view that the only way you're really going to get at this quickly and to uh, eliminate the long travail for the veterans is for the Congress to enact legislation that provides service connection compensation for all of these health effects. Uh, short of that, I believe that it's incumbent upon the Congress to subpoena the data from those chemical companies within its purview and to subpoena the witnesses as witnesses uh, under oath, the people who prepared those studies, and to create a record of the fraudulent nature of all the studies uh, so that uh, epidemiologists can begin to discard those as reference studies and pay attention only to the uh, honest ones that have been done. When the military stopped spraying Agent Orange in Vietnam, it did so because of the discovery that it contained harmful contaminants. Isn't it true that the United States government and the manufacturers of Agent Orange knew of the harmful effects of Agent Orange long before the spraying stopped? Yes, sir. There's absolutely no question that they knew about it. Uh, on page six of my report, for example, I quote uh, Dr. James uh, McClary, who says, uh, when we military scientists initiated the herbicide program in the 1960s, we were aware of the potential for damage due to dioxin contamination in the herbicide. We were even aware that the military formulation had a higher dioxin concentration than the civilian version due to the lower cost and speed of manufacture. However, because it was to be used on an enemy, none of us were overly concerned. We never considered a scenario in which our own personnel would become contaminated. And if we had, we would have expected our government to give assistance to veterans so contaminated. I have examined uh, files from the Dow Chemical Company provided to me through the Canadian system, which was able to get them without a hold on them, uh, that show that they were concerned about dioxin as early as 1961. We're going to be asking our next panel about commercial herbicides, but I understand that your research has discovered that there may be carcinogenic materials in 2,4-D, a chemical prevalent in herbicides. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Tiedelbaum, who is here and I believe will be testifying, uh, can give this evidence firsthand. But in my report, I quote uh, a letter from him which uh, cites his discovery of heretofore unreleased information about contaminants in uh, the 2,4-D uh, that uh, had never been disclosed. Based on your concerns, did you ask the Environmental Protection Agency to consider an emergency susp suspension of the use of 2,4-D? Uh, yes, sir, I did. I wrote a letter uh, 
a copy of which I can give the committee uh, to uh, Douglas Camp, who is the director of the Office of Pesticide Programs in the EPA, uh, attaching copies of uh, two documents which aver that the Dow Chemical Company has never informed EPA or any other government agency of significant concentrations of carcinogenic materials in 2,4-D uh, and uh, said that they ought to investigate. That was only sent on 8 June, however. So you, have, have you received a response from I that? I have not, and uh, I'm just sure that as soon as the chemical companies hear about it that there'll be all kinds of pressure brought to bear on EPA as there has been in the past. Do you believe that United States citizens are adequately protected from the harmful effects of herbicides in use today? I do not. I believe that there has been a scandalous failure on the part of all members of Congress and the executive branch who are concerned with these issues to have nailed down the extent to which uh, the, the fraudulent data provided by the chemical companies has uh, made this country far less passive, far more passive than it should be about the poisons being secreted. Uh, the, the study done by the University of Kansas and the National Cancer Institute a couple of years ago examining uh, Kansas farmers who had used 2,4-D as a pesticide and compared them to a control group who had not found six to eight times as many non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And a subsequent study in Nebraska came up with similar conclusions. We know that we're poisoning our people. I'm going to yield now to uh, my colleagues before I do so. Let me repeat what I said about our schedule this morning. Uh, we're going to recess the subcommittee at 10.45 so that we can all attend the joint session uh, with Mr. Mandela. And then we will resume in about 15 minutes after the joint session concludes. And I figure that should be about tw somewhere around 12, 12, 15. And at this point, then, I'm pleased to uh, recognize our distinguished ranking member, Mr. Army. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I. Uh First of all, let me thank you for holding these hearings. It's a very important subject matter, and I hope that we will gain some insight and understanding. I want to thank you, Admiral Zumwalt, for your uh, testimony this morning, as well as your uh, service to this country over a long period of time. I might ask uh, consent, Mr. Chairman, that my uh, formal remarks be put in the record. Without objection, that will be done. And I would like to ask uh, unanimous consent uh, that all members uh, be allowed to submit questions in writing to our witnesses. Without objection. Matt. And uh, with that, I will uh, go ahead and uh, give back the rest of my time. We can Thank get on with the hearings. Good. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Smith. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and Admiral. Uh, <clears throat> I have a would associate. I have a question, but before I ask it, I would associate myself with uh, what. Um, uh, my colleague, Mr. Army, has said, and I'd like to thank you for not only your service to this country, but also um, your, your continued service to this country. Service takes on uh, many forms um, and oft times, and I think what is disturbing to me as a new member of this Congress and this committee is that uh, it is after uh, men and women have left their formal or recognized uh, time of service that they are either able or um, uh, able to say and do things or f for other reasons come to a point of realization where they, c they are compelled to continue their service in other ways. Uh, and, and I think of the recent Iowa investigation uh, where uh, people who then uh, found themselves out uh, beyond their formal service were then able to turn around and say in fact the investigation bordered on fraudulent and I see uh, and hear you not only today but uh, I think the reason you're here today is that you uh, as you have moved beyond your formal service to this country find that there is a less formal but equally compelling set of reasons to that call you really to uh, try to uh, Bring to bring onto the table and in, in, into public scrutiny uh, data, facts, relationships, and consequences that uh, um, heretofore have only been wondered at. Um, and the burden of, uh, I guess, my opening comment is that it has to be in the best interest of this country for issues such as the issues which surround the use of Agent Orange in Vietnam and, and uh, the health issues which have plagued uh, veterans since then 
to remove them uh, from the area the, from the area of speculation. In other words, all over this country, all over my state of Vermont, when you sit down with Vietnam era veterans, um, they believe in their hearts, uh, and many of them have the anecdotes, but they're not scientists uh, uh, to, to, to really to prove, if you will, in non-scientific ways, uh, that something terribly wrong happened. Uh, that then spreads out uh, across the population, and so in barroom conversations and living room conversations and conversations amongst friends all over this country, you have speculation about what may or may not have happened, what the consequences may or may not be. And I, and I would submit to this committee uh, that that is a form of a nightmare, that we owe people more than uh, the right to speculate in a free society about what may or may not happen. Uh, we owe them a full report and we owe them the truth. However painful or difficult that truth is uh, for anybody um, to accept. I guess with that you have used words that I think are all too common and, uh, and, and, and perhaps we hear them uh, so much these days, whether it's uh, with uh, this institution's complicity in both parties with the SNL crisis or where, wherever else. Uh, um, you've used the word fraudulent repeatedly, even since I have come here. Uh, and I guess I, I want to pursue that and ask you to try to describe not the specifics of the fraud, but the nature of, of what you perceive to be or allege to be um, the fraudulent uh, activity of the federal government um, in terms of uh, hiding the truth about this specific uh, issue of the use of Agent Orange and its, and its co health consequences on American servicemen and women. Uh, are you suggesting that there was an active conspiracy, and we're now talking over the better part of two decades, I would say, uh, uh, so it's not one political party or another or one branch of government or another or anything else. Uh, it, it is big enough for everybody to take a piece of the responsibility here. Are you suggesting that there, were, there was an active conspiracy, um, and if so, uh, could you describe its nature, or is it a passive uh, conspiracy of acceptance, uh, uh, like the Ibsen play where the water was poisoned and no one wanted to talk about it because the town would lose business? Uh, could you characterize it? Could you describe it? And could you help this freshman congressman uh, figure out how to get a handle on it so that uh, he can proceed with his interrogation over time? Yes, sir. I, I believe it to have been active pursuit of uh, manipulated or fraudulent results. Uh, I believe that, uh, for example, there was a deliberate policy of not carrying out the original uh, intent and proposal that there be veterans representation or, or scientists designated by veterans serving on the ranch hand study. That was never done. I believe that the ranch hand draft working report uh, was withheld for five years and released only when this company, when this committee threatened to subpoena it uh, because it had information that shows that uh, Vietnam veterans, children, have twice the normal uh, uh, number of birth defects, twice the defects that, that those uh, children born before Vietnam service uh, had. I believe that the, uh, the White House working group uh, clearly instructed that there be a uh, rewriting of the uh, report that was released uh, to eliminate a critical paragraph about health effects and to add the word reassuring results, whereas the original draft had said uh, these definitely cannot be judged to be negative results. Uh, similarly, with regard to the Centers for Disease Control, uh, we know that Dr. Vernon Houck, uh, it's been reported in this committee, uh, has gone to great lengths not only to, uh, to uh, produce optimistic outcomes or 
or meaningless outcomes by, by refusing to find out who was truly exposed in Vietnam, but has called up and tried to raise cane with people who came out with different results. Uh, and uh, has just recently signed a letter that ought to shock every American, recommending that the dioxin level approved for dumping be increased by a factor of 50. You have a very, very biased individual running that division. So <clears throat> is it fair to say that from your, um, from your point of view, um, that there is a, an active conspiracy that includes um, certain uh, multinational corporations, um, multiple administrations, uh, uh, multiple, uh, multiple sitting Congress says, and uh, the CDC, at least? One, one could never find a document that uh, described that cabal. But we know, sir, that uh, chemical companies uh, spend lots of money both on public relations and on legislative relations, and their lobbyists are all over town. Uh, they've had articles printed trying to denigrate uh, my recent study. Uh, they're out trying to influence their congressmen and their senators, and telephone calls get made to uh, the EPA and to the CDC, and that's the way the process works. It's, uh, it's uh, the worst form of government ever invented except for all the others that have been tried. And uh, it, uh, it, you and I both know, goes on. I'm just learning. Uh, and I, I will tell you that this is uh, an issue that, I, that started out as an ac academic issue with me as a candidate. And uh, through this committee and other researches and readings I've done has become much more than that. And to me, uh, the parallel that, that hits me in the face uh, is that it is the chemical equivalent uh, in, some, in, in some regards, uh, the, chem the chemical equivalent of um, the current SNL scandal. There's no uh, question about and, it, uh, except it, that this is much worse because lives are being lost. Absolutely. I, I mean, I, it's hard for me to, to, to weigh which is worse when you're talking about the, the potential violation of public trust uh, across the board and, and through time. And with that, I'll stop. But I, I thank you for your continued service Thanks. to this country um, and uh, to this committee. Thank you very much, Mr. Smith. Admiral, again, you have the gratitude of this committee. And I would think the gratitude not only the veterans of this nation, but the people of this nation. I think you performed uh, great public service on top of the great public service that you performed throughout your career. Thank you so much. Thank you for calling this hearing, Mr. Chairman.